Last week we talked all about the pressure for when it comes to men and women, and is it the same when it comes to looking young? I was having so much fun with my panel of experts, I wanted to bring them back again this week to further discuss the pressures put on people by society and how we can choose happiness today, here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps on giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And if the good, I won't even worry anymore Took all my cares, still can kick them all out the door Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep on going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to The Younger You. Well, I decided this year to have a little bit more of in-depth discussion with some of my wonderful friends about why we do what we do in becoming a younger you. Now, I had our guests here last week for our first episode, so let me reintroduce them. Dr. Dan, speaker, author, and facilitator of consciousness, Eric Schmidt, our resident mental health expert, and of course, Kim Fisher and Nadia Crow, of course, our ABC4 news anchors, here as our media representatives. People wanted to chat a little bit more about the cosmetic surgery and the addiction to that, okay? Mm -hmm. And the impact, psychology, and why we want it done as the public. So these are some of the questions. I mentioned earlier on, billions of dollars are spent on cosmetic surgery annually. Why do you think people are choosing cosmetic surgery over natural remedies? I would think, number one, it seems to be easier, you know? Uh, and, but we yeah. also live in a culture that it's like, hey, uh, go under the knife rather than do any other sort of work. We want a pill, we want an easy solution, but it's a, cultural, it's a culture that we live in at this point. Mm -hmm. And also, a there are a certain segment of the population that looks for natural alternatives and natural remedies. They're, they're resistant to the allopathic medicine method. That's got its own limitations. I think what we ought to look at is finding a balance somewhere that actually works for us using all of it. Mm -hmm. Kim? You know, I, I would have to say people are reaching out to cosmetic surgery because it's a lot easier now than maybe it was in the past. It's a lot mm. more acceptable now than yep. it was in the past. <clears throat> yes. And I think that people in general do it to make themselves feel better about something. Now, if they go get that cosmetic surgery and they do feel better about themselves, great. I think where it becomes a problem is when they do it and then all of a sudden they're like, well, now I don't like this. I fix that. Right. Now I don't like this. Then it's something I need more and more. deeper. Yeah. yeah. Eric as a mental health expert, good or bad for us? I don't think I can answer whether it's good or bad. I think what, I think I, the biggest thing that I focus on when I have folks in my office discussing whether or not they want to go down this path is do they know their motivations and what story are they telling themselves? Mm -hmm. My nose looks okay. different, all of a sudden I'm going to be more popular, more mm -hmm. lively, people are going to like me more. Uh, there's a lot of fantasy sometimes that goes on around the procedures. If people really understand what they're getting themselves into and they really end, and, and, and they choose to go with it, that's typically, um, I can support that. But whether it's good or bad, I'm not sure. I do want to say one thing that piggyback on what Dane said, is that it's, for a lot of people it seems to be this instant gratification. And there is fantasy around that. Oh. Mm. But as a society, don't we want instant gratification? Oh, oh yeah, nice. absolutely. It's way well, easier than actually yes. working exactly. so hard. Who wants to go to the gym for three months exactly. when you can right. have my perception? There it is. Right. If you have the money, you can look any way you want to look. And it'll take you be that way tomorrow. You know, you don't have to take and three months. You, did you know you can now finance your surgery? There are companies so out there that you can money. finance your cosmetic surgery. So the money is now the money's obsolete. No longer barrier you to can entry. pay it off. Right. Um, interesting question here. I've heard time and time again, I feel young on the inside. I want to look young on the outside. How do you think it can help someone feel better to match their outer appearance to the way they feel on the inside? That's a big question. Yeah, it is. How do you do that? I guess the first question is, is what is that going to do for you? And most people don't have an answer. No, because we're <laughs> I'm sitting, sitting here true. contemplating Everybody's right mind we went blank. We journalists here. <laughs> and we're like, like, Actually, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're right. How is that? But I have a, fr a friend that I talked to who um, had that conversation with me. She's on all these dating websites. She's really fun and bubbly, um, but she's grayed much sooner than the average woman would. She started graying in her 20s. And so she asked me, do you think I should dye my hair now um, so I look my age? So this is someone who oh. is trying so to So she, she affiliates gray hair with, with older age. And she thinks that men on these sites see her gray hair and think she's older as well. Well, they will. Right. I'm glad so, you said that because so I was going to. 
They I'm will. glad and, a professional said it. <laughs> but she does. She likes her hair color and she's embracing it. But it has, also has this negative effect for her getting back out into the dating world. So that's the, that's the internal challenge that she's having right now of which way she should lean. But that's naturally what we go through, Troy. I mean, we, well, of we, we, we talked in the last session about judgment. And the first, and our, we all naturally judge, we naturally judge each other. And that's been with us through evolution. We choose our mates, we choose our tribes. We do that all when the very first selection process is how do we look? And so I, I'm not sure I wouldn't normalize what your friend is going through. Mm. And uh, I think it's probably a really valid feeling right. and pro probably a pretty valid response. This show is all about becoming a younger you and sometimes people feel it requires cosmetic surgery. We have seen in season one how it can make such a positive change in someone's life. But let's talk about the psychology of why so many people choose to nip and tuck. I love a little bit of cosmetic surgery, but it's important to know when enough is enough and to be happy with who you are. Do you think the fact that we see so many perfect bodies, perfect faces mm. because of Photoshop and ads on TV, do you think that is the reason we maybe judge ourselves even more? I'm we, well, we, we know that it's true. Yeah. I mean, there's, there have mm. been multiple studies that show that we, call, that we judge ourselves against those images, which are if you look at most magazines, the people don't even have pores, yeah. right? right? So I haven't been able to pull that one off yet. <laughs> Our makeup yeah. artist said, use this pore filler. Exactly. We're like, what? Let's we got pores? <laughs> no, but the interesting thing is too, is in, in letting, you, letting you off the hook, you also have to, you're in, in an industry that really values image and how you're presenting, and how you present, and, and you have to create a little bit of that. So in, in all fairness to you guys, I mean, you, that, your paycheck is sort of, Continue to pull on It's on only moment. people that really are the megastars like Brad Pitt who can take off the makeup and appear on the front of a... Of but a then why does yeah. the mother pushing the pram down the street feel more self-conscious than we do? Because they, 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 it goes back to what I think some of the, the things we were talking about earlier with those shoulds. Look, so-and-so just had a baby and they... Claudia Schiffer Stretch just had a baby, has yeah. no Stretch. stretch marks. Yeah. I, I don't know how she did that. I also should not have stretch marks or a paunch or so there's all, we are bombarded more than ever now, especially men are bombarded more with ever with this is how you should look. Well, they make up 20% of the cosmetic surgery in this country, men the procedures, is? men. Wow. That I'm is surprised a, it's that low. It's yeah. a huge growing industry for men, men and beauty treatments and injectables and facelifts and it's incredible. It's crazy. Wow. I wanted to ask you about Kim Kardashian. Do you think she's a positive role model for the girls out there? You know what? I would not be the one to speak on Kim Kardashian because I have not ever seen one of her Instagram posts. Are you one serious? Of her Facebook posts. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the plugged in social media person. <laughs> Do I, you think you're a better person because of it then? Uh, I, I don't even have an answer for that. I can't even speak to it. Yeah. I would say, see for me, I learned a long time ago, I don't tend to read newspapers. I, I will do, I'm very active in social media, but I'm posting and everything I post is about uh -huh. empowering people or giving them a tool to be happier today. Oh. So yeah. I really can't tell you okay. about what Kim is doing. I and, find that interesting. And people look at me exactly like that, like, Wow, what, what yeah. planet are you living on? I'm like yeah. a very happy one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you one know? of my guilty nice. pleasures is <laughs> no, looking at my gossip <laughs> sites online and watching trashy reality TV. I love it. It's my guilty pleasure. I've got, I can admit that. But I think when... It's time it's, out for us in our yeah, head. It is. Yeah. You get to mm -hmm. yeah. separate yourself We, do, we just bit. don't want people to think we're stupid. <laughs> 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 but whether it's a little girl who's looking up to Kim Kardashian or Beyonce or another public figure, uh, or it's, an, it's a woman, you're still comparing yourself to that person. Because mm -hmm. if you do look at Kim's Instagram or Beyonce's Instagram, all the comments from men are, you're so beautiful, you're the most beautiful woman in the world. And so you're thinking to yourself, well, I want to be beautiful too. So then you have this, you're trying to keep up with somebody who has a makeup team and a hairstylist and a manicurist who follows them everywhere and the best lighting every time they take a picture. And you're, you're trying it's to compete with somebody who has a team of people who make them look the way they look plus Photoshop. Well, you later. demanded extra lighting when we sat on the couch. Here. I did, I demanded extra lighting. <laughs> I'm going to answer your question. No, yeah. she is not a good role model okay, for young good. women. No. A good role model, and, and you know, there are going to be people at home that disagree with me. I speak about this constantly, nonstop, because I want, I want to be a good role model for young girls. Uh, 
She's famous for doing nothing other than having a big hiney and a videotape that you can't watch on TV. Mm. What else has she done for society, for young women to set an example, to be a role model? Beyonce, absolutely, freaking lutely She's talented. She's responsible. She's being a good mother. Those are all great things for, for women. I don't see any scandal with Beyonce. None. None. Yeah. None. And there's a reason for that. I, I absolutely believe the Kim Kardashians, Paris Hiltons of the world who are just famous for being pretty. It's not something that young girls should look up to and unfortunately, like Nadia said, they it do. sets a standard that is not attainable. No. Can I change my answer to her obtain. answer? Yes. <laughs> that was a good I'm like, <laughs> that was brilliant. You should have had that answer. I, yes. What advice do you give to parents mm -hmm. with kids that are continually looking at these type of things online? Well, the fact is you can't protect them from it. Yeah. And well, he can because he doesn't watch it. <laughs> well, he can't I, protect, I protect his myself. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, exactly. You, I think the best thing that we can t t teach our kids is to internalize what their own values are. And a lot of that is future thinking, which kids aren't really all that good at. But sometimes you, you can think, uh, well, most kids, ve very few kids, I would guess, say, I want to grow up to be Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. um, most kids, when you ask them, especially 13, 14, they're formulating their sense of self, they're going to say, they tend to gravitate towards a career. And then you say, well, what kind of person does well in, those, in that career? What you're asking them to do is to bring their values into consciousness. Yeah. And then their values are present when they need to make choices. And then they can make choices. Do I want to model myself after Kim Kardashian? Or do I want to model myself after this Kim? Yeah. yeah. Looking for the perfect beauty product? Each week, The Younger You highlights a standout product in the health and beauty industry. Head over to theyoungeryou.tv and check it out. Love to hear your comments. Closed captioning for The Younger You is brought to you by Mindful Medical. Dating sites can help people find true love, but it's far too easy for someone to misrepresent themselves. Let's find out what my panel of experts think. Well, I think part of the beauty of the world we live in now is people can date later in life and it's okay. Of which course it is. Which is yeah. a really cool thing, you know, because yeah. years ago uh, there were so many things that were judged and frowned upon. How do you help them? I think it's the same way you help anybody else. I think you look and you go, okay, so for me what I look at is I go, okay, so at what point did you buy this as a real point of view about you? I like that. What point did you buy this? And most of the judgments, in fact, I would say all of the judgments we have of us are points of view that we bought at an, an earlier point in time. Because yeah. kids don't judge when they come in. It's something they learn. It's something we I teach know. them as a way of getting by in this society. And so if you can get them to go back to when they bought it and say, okay, this is something you bought. Is it really true? And what's true makes you feel lighter, a lie makes you feel heavier. Is this making you feel lighter or making you feel heavier? And, they, and that starts to let them let it go and sort of dislodge it from their world. So I'm, I'm happily engaged yeah. in a relationship. We met on Match.com. Oh, you I did? See. Wow. Yes, we did. <laughs> he was a good catch on Match.com. It was Catch.com. You know, so that, that, worked, that worked for me and I felt, I felt some pressure even when I was on that website. But I'm going to take it even a step further, and I have friends who are older who are on Tinder, who are on different, yeah. you know, dating websites, and I see them just flip, flip, flip past people's pictures because they're seeing something that they don't like, mm -hmm. and so they'll flip past. And so there is that pressure on people, especially women, who are of an older generation going, okay, he's just going to flip past my picture if I, I have don't. this wrinkle. He's going to flip uh. past my picture if, you know, I. that's... I can understand that pressure to get the nipping and tucking, especially if you're in the dating world at an older age, because people are judging you specifically on a five second picture. Because we've talked about how men have cosmetic surgery now, we really don't yes. think about it. Mm -hmm. I think the pressure is really the same for men yeah. on dating sites because they're just as lonely or, you know, discontented with their life, not and having a partner. And insecure with themselves. And insecure. Yeah. And have the judgments also. I think women in general are just more accepting of mm -hmm. different body types, different ages. Interesting than you say that. with men, hmm. because there's so many women on those sites. And I, I had an interview with a dating expert who, who said, we're always looking for what's better. The grass is greener. There's somebody better. You might be on a date, but if you just go home and go to your computer, you can find 
tomorrow night's date and mm -hmm. she'll be even prettier and even skinnier. And so I think for women, we're more likely not to settle. I was going to say, do you think it's settling? I don't think it's settling, but I think it's, uh, you know, Kim and I are attracted to different men. So I think that makes it easier for a man to go out into the world because women are more accepting of who men are and they're not looking for the Cristiano Ronaldo's yep. of the world. Whereas with men, I feel like more men especially as they get older, want eye candy on their arm. Mm -hmm. And they okay. want a certain age. And once you hit 30, 35 for a woman, you become less desirable. What do you yeah. think? I actually beg to differ. And okay, I like being, that. Being a man that himself doesn't have the <clears throat> typical taste in women, I don't have a type. And what I see is I see some amazingly beautiful people in all kinds of different bodies. And I know a lot of men that are like that. So I realized probably the standard because men are enculturated so visually that that seems to be one of the big standards that that, that's out there. But I know a lot of men that don't have that as their point of view. They're looking for the person behind the eyes, not the shape and the body it comes in. And so I totally get what you're talking about also, and I think that's a valid point too. But I think also if you're trying to be attracted to the guy who's flipping that's not the person you want. Right. No. You don't want the guy who's going to flip yeah. by but your face on Tinder. He's going to flip by and yeah. Yeah. always and I would looking. I that you and your friends are the minority right. of the guys out there. I wished more men were like you. <laughs> I could see past all of the cosmetic yeah. everything. I think Na Naughty is onto something. I, and, I, and, I, and I do think, though, that, that, that sometimes we have to be careful about judging people in developmental crises, mm. like um, a 50-year-old with a 23-year-old. That's more about what that man is trying to, what kind of story well, he's trying to create for himself. I have to say, I just went on a date and I said that person was too young for me. You know what? And he I might have developmentally been too young for you and that's okay. I have no idea. I didn't get to that part because <laughs> all I, I'll be honest with you, because all I thought was people will judge me for going out with someone that was too young. Isn't it funny? What I think about cosmetic surgery, it's definitely someone's choice. I don't necessarily think it's bad, but it, it just shows to me that in this world that we live in, there's all this pressure to be like the best. I just believe that women are just always in the constant eye of the public and always having to look their best and they feel pressure. I think they feel younger and um, they're happier about the way they look, so uh, it makes them feel better. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think everybody compares themselves to what's out there online. Um, the thing about social media affecting this would be like, you know, it's really easy to pick someone apart or make fun of them over the internet because you're not face to face or you're not responsible for it. You can just hide behind your computer and say whatever you want about someone. My panel of experts have some great advice on how to eliminate negative self-talk as we discuss how often people compare themselves to others. Like us on Facebook for updates on the show and how to join the Younger You conversation. Well, this is a really interesting topic that I wanted to discuss with our two professionals, but of course, please chime in because there were questions from viewers. We're talking about eliminating self-talk and how to choose happiness. Dr. Dan, tell us a little bit how to eliminate self-talk. So and what is self-talk? Well, the self-talk is that monkey mind that continues to go on in your head about how you're wrong, how you're fat, how you're stupid, oh, how I you're thought not that was mini-me. I know, exactly. <laughs> that when you hear mini-me, it's the self-talk. Okay, and how that's do we eliminate what you, it? Well, what you want to recognize is we've been picking this up ever since we were little kids. And one of the things I found in the work that I do, I mentioned it on the first show, which is 98% of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and that self-talk isn't actually even yours. It's not coming from you. It's something you're picking up in the outside world either now or something that you bought a long time ago. So in real time, when you notice mini-me piping up again, you're on this date and he's like, oh my God, you were looking so fat. This person's never going to love you and marry you. You go, wait a minute, who does that belong to? And when did I buy it as mine? And return it to sender. Whoever's putting that out, you don't need it anymore. Let mm. it go. Yeah, so what happens if it's because uh, all of a sudden I've got some cellulite because I'm older? Yeah. Uh, you know, nobody gave it to me other than, you know, those potato chips I was eating last <laughs> 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 How do you send that away? I mean, you know, like, how do you not, 
you come and visit me on the Younger You set. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay. That's when you talk with Troy. Yeah. (laughs) Here's the interesting thing, though, is our body gives us more of what we judge. Yeah. So if you notice the cellulite and like, oh, my God, that is getting so fat and wrinkly or whatever, you get more of that. Whereas instead, if you go, "Uh uh-uh, I'm stopping the judgment right now, you don't carry it any further and you don't lock it into your body and make your body create that. Okay. Okay. I like I'll that. work on that. You've got to work on that, Kim. <laughs> okay, why do you think people have so much negative images of themselves? Because I think they're consistently comparing themselves with idealized images that we're bombarded with. And we're also wow. taught by um, our, through our early childhood of how we should look. Okay. Yeah. And, and you see changes. those images. Yeah. And well, we do every day. You do, you see those images. On the bus on the bus, on our the news, magazine stand, anything we everybody. do. Everybody. You know, and we had a conversation about Kim Kardashian that she shouldn't be a role model, but she is a role model because yeah. so many people, men, women, little girls, little boys, look up to her as being the status of beauty. So whether the rest of us who are, don't agree with that, that's what's happening. All right. How do we choose happiness? Uh, the thing is we got to get first. It's a choice. Most people don't realize happiness is a choice and sadness is a choice. What's the choice Mm. you want to make today? You know, and there's another thing you can look at is you can either be right or you can be happy. What are you going to choose? What do you mean by that? Well, what most people are doing is they're trying to prove the rightness of their point of view, Uh whatever it is, whether they've decided that they're wrong. And what it does, it eliminates the happiness from your life because you're so busy trying to judge Mm. and try to fit everything into the box that you're right and try to convince everybody that you're right so you don't feel so wrong anymore. Sort of a tough place to be. If you're actually gonna choose the happiness, it really comes down to getting out of the judgment of you more than anything else. And recognizing that, here's a question I give people is, what's right about me I'm not getting? Because most of us are in the wrongness of us consistently. You start to ask what's right about me I'm not getting, it starts to open the door for possibilities. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What do you think, Yeah, I've heard that before. Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Yeah. Um, Always wanting to be right, that's tough. Uh, Whether it's a conversation with someone you work with, whether it's looking at yourself in the mirror, if you're constantly trying to prove that you're right, that's a lot of hard work instead of just accepting what it is. A lot of energy taken Mm -hmm. up. What kind of personal things do you do to keep positive? So um, I do a, a variety of different things, but one mm. of the things I, I think of is a, exactly what Dane talked about. There is a, a Victor Frankl, who is a survivor, I think, of Auschwitz, says happiness is created, it's not found. And so I spend a lot of time th- thinking about how I can create happiness, and I spend a lot of time thinking about what I could be grateful for, as cliche as that seems. And I also do a, a lot of practice of, of, what, um, of what I call a um, ideal me. And I picture that person. Sometimes I picture a little place on the floor and I step into it. I feel what I feel. I think what I think. I hear what I hear. And then I carry that with me. I think part of it is we look and see, am I actually headed where I really want to be headed? Is, is what I'm choosing now going to get me there? So we look at this, am I good enough from the perspective of, is it actually going to create the future that I want? And I think a lot of times we judge that no matter what we do, we're not going to be able to create the future that we want. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I think it's been very exciting over two episodes to have you all here. And thanks to my co-workers, I really appreciate it. It's clear that society has a large impact on people's self-image. And with the world becoming more and more connected every day with the ever-growing advances in technology, it's sometimes hard to step back and remember what truly is important. Whether you feel cosmetic surgery will bring you happiness or you want to find an alternative way to put the pep back into your step, this season I will show you the ways to find the younger you. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to find out more information about the show, head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.